Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on climatology. So in this session on climatology, we are going to talk about one of the most important climatic classification that is the Trivarthas climatic classification. And if you have not watched the climatic classification of Koppen and Thornwet, please you can go to the climatology playlist and watch it. But before we go ahead in today's session, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also share the videos with others as well. So now, after we have already learned about the Koppen's classification, the Thornwitz classification, the third in the line is one of the most important and modern climatic classification that we say that came in about 1960s, that is Trivartha's classification of climate. And Trivartha, the Glenn T. Trivartha as we say, was an eminent American climatologist again and he classified it on the modification of what existed in the Koppen's system. So that was interesting and important that in 1960s when we see the quantitative revolution in geography taking place, right? So in that particular time when other different sciences were developing, different technologies were developing, there is where this Glenn T. Trivartha comes into picture and he tries to simplify the explanation of this Koppen's climatic system. So besides being simple and explanatory, Trivartha's classification combines the basic fundamentals of empirical as well as genetic classification schemes as well. Now remember in the Koppen's classification earlier, this is what was missing. There was no genetic basis, there was no empirical basis of a particular area which was actually incorporated by Trivartha. So that is important. So Trivartha while proposing his climatic classification was very conscious of this fact that classification systems of Koppen and Thornwit being based on certain statistical parameters of certain weather elements were cumbersome and complex. So the whole idea was that what is pre-existence that is complex. So let me simplify this. So Trivartha tried to decode it, simplify it and explain it to the world, to the scientists, to the scholars that this classification system can be deconstructed and simplified. So now let's understand what did Trivartha do in his classification of climate. So Trivartha recognized only a limited number of principal climatic types. So he did not make a very elaborate principal climatic types. That is the basic prevalent types. Actually, he made use of two important basic weather elements, what we know as temperature and precipitation as a basic for his own classification. Now remember, temperature and precipitation was coming from again the same Koppen's classification, right? So beside these, the effects of land and water surfaces on climate of an area have also been taken into consideration. Now this is what is the modification as we are talking. So this was absent in the earlier classification. The impact of local topography, land and water surfaces in a particular area, these things were actually not taken into consideration earlier, which was taken into consideration by Trivartha. So what you see, he has classified the world climates into again seven climatic groups. Now remember these seven types, Trivartha seven. So that is how you can remember. So T7. So A. Now here B is gone. Remember now from A you have C, D, E, F and then you have H. So B is gone here and why is this separated because it is completely a dry group. Now this dry group, this B group is separated on the basis of precipitation. Now remember two criteria, temperature criteria and precipitation criteria. On the basis of temperature criteria, you have AC. Remember temperature, you need AC. So you can start with this clue that AC for temperature. So AC, DEF and H. This is the six which is on the temperature criteria and only one that is B for dry for the precipitation criteria he took. So now let's understand what is this A, C, D, E, F, H on the basis of temperature criteria and then what falls under B which is the precipitation criteria that is the dry group. So it is very simple seven principal climatic types A, C, D, E, F and H that is six types on the temperature and seventh that is the B part which is on dry group. So let's elaborate further more. So now let's begin with this six first. The six which is A, C, D, E, F and H these are based on temperature criteria. So one by one let's understand what is this A, what is this C. So A is further divided into two types. One has A, R and one is A, W. So now A, R is tropical wet climate and this is basically only having very few, two dry months only. So it is largely wet. And then AW, remember W is for what? Wet and dry climate. 
So AW is for tropical, wet and dry. So A is tropical coming from Koppen itself. Now here you have AR and AW that is two types, two subtypes of this particular type. Now let's go to the C part. So when we go to group C, what you see here is that on the basis of seasonal distribution of precipitation, that is important. Again, you have C, small f, small w, C, small s, those two subtypes. Now this f and w, remember this f, what was that? f was where you have fully wet season, that is always, so no dry season, that is important. So this type of climate is found on eastern side of the continents. This type of climate comes under influence of unstable air and remember it has subtropical anticyclone as well and the no distinct dry season. Now remember it is F, so it is fully wet, that is important. Then CS, now remember this CS, capital C and small s, it is subtropical dry summer type. That is important to remember. Annual precipitation here is 890 millimeters. That is about 35 inches only. So this is C2 subtypes, right? Then we have number D on the temperature criteria. So number D again has do and DC. Now you can remember this DO and DC. It's simple to remember do DC. So D for do DC. And what is this do? Do is temperature of marine climate. Now this is important to remember, marine climate where you have these 12 months where humid climate with adequate precipitation in all seasons is there. So that is marine and this is dew and this is DC. So this small c is temperate continental climate. Now the word itself is continental. So in temperate belt, that is in mid latitude belt, interior of the continent which is largely drier that is important to remember. So climate basically is land controlled here. Climatic type is characterized by severe winters and summers. Extremity is there because it is continental. So as simple to remember, do DC. So do is more about wet condition and DC is about the land control, which is interior. So that is D part. Let's go to the E part. Again, come to the E. So where you see E is basically for subarctic or boreal, remember? This area is kind of a frontal zone of this polar belt. So this area is actually having subarctic or boreal climate, which is found in the higher middle latitudes. Now somewhere between 50 and 60 degrees north and south of equator, if you find, you'll find this kind of climate zone and super continental in temperature features. You'll find there average temperatures hovers about 10 degrees C for one or two, three months. And many of the times in here, you'll find temperature below 10 degrees C. So this is important and precipitation is largely throughout the year, especially during the warmer months when amount of water vapor present in the air is highest. So that is simple. So E has no certain different classes. It is largely the subpolar condition. So you can remember here E is subpolar belt on the temperature criteria. Then what is left is F and H. So what is this F? Now in group F again, what you have is number one and number two. So it is FTFI. So FTFI is what? FT is for tundra. So T for tundra. And when I say tundra, you know what is tundra. And if you don't know, please go to the biomes and learn about tundra on my playlist. So you can watch that on biogeography playlist as well. So tundra climate is found in the northern hemisphere only. And that is important to remember here. So this is FT, which is only in northern hemisphere. This can be an important part. So remember, FT is only in northern hemisphere. And FI is ice cap. So this is also in the southern hemisphere as well. So Greenland and Antarctica, both of them have this ice cap. So FI is for ice cap, I for ice, T for tundra. So simple to remember. Then number H. So H is again very simple. It's the same highland climate type. And Trivatha says there is no such thing as highland type, by the way. But he although classified it because of the reason that it was based on the earlier classification. And he said that there is nothing called highland type of climate because various types of local climate exist in every significant mountain range. So even mountain ranges are different. Some had these, some highlands had ice caps, some did not have ice. So they also vary. So one H is not possible, but he did not say much on this and simply left it to being group H, right? So that is important. Now come to the last part, that is the seventh part, the only part on precipitation criteria, which is group B. So group B is representation of a dry climatic group where precipitation values are fixed. That is important. So dryness is the criteria and dryness is the absence of precipitation. That is why it is important to remember that other six were temperature criteria, and this group B is for 
dryness which is on precipitation criteria so because of clear and calm weather and dry atmosphere the dry climates are quite severe for their latitudes with large annual ranges of temperature that is important right and abundance of sunshine small cloudiness are some of the common features of group b that is important to remember here now let's elaborate what are its subtypes of group b these are the subtypes what are the subtypes number one you find one and two that is b capital w b w is for arid or desert type so remember b w is for arid completely or desert type and b s is for semi arid s is semi arid or steppy type of classification and b w and b s are further classified these two are parts of the what you say is the group b so b w and b s and now this bw and bs have two types one is bwh and bwk and bsh and bsk so what is this h and k in both now remember this h and k h is again tropical subtropical hot desert so it is bwh h is for hot then k is for basically boreal cold climates where you have bwk then bsh so again it is tropical boreal steppe so it is sh remember and tropical zone so hot zone and then what you have is bsk so bsk is temperate boreal and cold so remember bw and bs in which you have to add h and k in both h and k in both so you have two further here and two further here so that is how it is divided if you observe so bwh bwk bsh and bs k that is how the precipitation criteria is actually fulfilled so we have seven types what you see in the trivarthas climatic classification so now when we have discussed in details the climatic classification of trivartha and the previous two classification that is the koppen's classification and also thornwitz classification now in the sessions to come we'll be talking more on applied climatology urban heat island and global climatic changes so stay tuned stay safe all the best